Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to part 11 of a 95 part series of tutorials in object oriented programming in C. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the introduction of the object oriented programming concept that we call polymorphism. My name is Memeji M, or you can simply call me Emily Swap. What is polymorphism? Polymorphism is the ability to take more than one form. An operation may exhibit different behaviors in different instances. The behavior depends upon the type of data used in the operation. Polymorphism plays an important role in allowing objects having different internal structures to share the same external interface. This means that a general class of operations may be accessed in the same manner, even though specific actions associated with each operation may differ. Polymorphism allows routines to use variables of different types at different times. An operator or function can be given different meanings or functions. Polymorphism refers to a single function or malfunctioning or multifunctioning, multifunctioning operator performing in different ways. Polymorphism refers to a single function or multifunctioning operator performing in different ways. Polymorphism is therefore the ability to request that the same operations be performed by a wide range of different types of things. There are basically two types of polymorphisms, which are the compiled time, also known as early binding, and runtime, also known as late binding polymorphism. The ability of different objects to respond to the same message in different ways is called polymorphism. That is, each object can have a unique response to the same message. Polymorphism can also be defined as the ability of objects of different classes related by inheritance to respond differently to the same member functionally called. It allows the use of identical interfaces with different implementations. Polymorphism is important when the code is complex enough that you are no longer sure of the exact class of an object, and therefore you can just send it a message and rely on it doing the right thing at runtime based on its class. Polymorphism allows different classes of objects that share some common functionality to be used in a code that requires only that common functionality. That is, routines having the same generic name are interpreted differently depending on the class of the objects presented as arguments to the routines. In a compile time polymorphism, objects knows or an object knows about itself at compile time. Overloading is a compile time polymorphism. In runtime polymorphism, objects or an object does not know about itself at compile time. It assigns all the properties and methods at runtime. Dynamic binding means that the code associated with a given procedure call is not known until the time of the call at runtime. For example, an object which has a certain function and that was inherited from its respective class will inherit the function, but won't have any access or won't have any effect unless or until it is called. 
One important reason for having dynamic binding is that it provides a mechanism for selecting different alternatives, which is arguably more robust than explicit selection by conditionals or pattern matching. Polymorphism can therefore be said to be the ability to create a variable, a function, or an object that has more than one form. The purpose of polymorphism is to implement a style of programming called message passing in the literature, in which objects of various types define a common interface of operations for users. In strongly typed languages, polymorphism usually means that type A somehow drives from type B, or type C implements an interface that represents type B. I repeat, in strongly typed languages, polymorphism usually means that type A somehow drives from type B, or type C implements an interface that represents type B. For example, the following two classes inherit from a common parent and implement the same visual method. Thus, if an object calls the method, For example, f function produces different results depending on the context as illustrated below. Therefore, two classes, if two classes inherit from a common parent and implement the same virtual method, then if, for example, you have an object call that will call a method such as f, it will produce different results depending on the context applied. For example, as follows. You have class A. Class A has public members. And one of the public member is a virtual void function called f. So zero is assigned to the function. In other words, the function called f in this case has been initialized or the value to be returned by this function called f has been initialized to zero. So zero has been assigned to the function called f, which is of type void, which is a void function, but a virtual one. Then you have class B. It has a public member called f, which is a virtual void function. And it has the statement, or it is displaying the message called hello from B. So you can see that this function at this point the function called f will display the message called hello from b, indicating this message hello is coming from class b. And then we have class c. This class c has a function, a public function called f still a void virtual function called f. But what does it do? This one will display the message hello from C. 
So this statement, hello from C, is simply to indicate that when this uh, statement will be executed through a certain object that belongs to class C, it will display the message, hello from C. But if we call or if we perform an activity where we are going to call or make use of an object that belongs to class B, then it will display the message, hello, and it will be from B. But if we invoke the function code or the member code, F from class A, we are going to get a different output, which will be or may be zeros being displayed, or by zero being displayed, depending on how those members will be invoked. And with that, my dear students and the rest of the learners, you have realized that we can have the same function with the same name, but because it belongs to different classes, we can have that same function performing different class uh, activities or behaving differently depending on the class or depending on the class whose object that is being manipulated belongs to. If we are dealing with an object or an instance of the class called C, and we invoke the member called F, we shall have the message hello from C being displayed. If we invoke the member called F through an instance or through an object of class B, we are going to have that function or that member display the message hello from B. And if we do it, if we invoke it from an instance or an object that belongs to class A, then we are going to get another different result. So you can see that the same member called F of the method called F is generating different results depending on the object that has been invoked and the class that it belongs to. And with that, we have come to the end of part 11 of the 95 part series of tutorials on object-oriented programming. You can proceed and listen to part 12, in which I am going to speak about the object-oriented programming concept that is called encapsulation. Congratulations for learning part 11 of 95 on explanation of object-oriented programming concept called polymorphism. You can access videos for the other parts in object-oriented programming series, as well as other computer or ICT videos by clicking or tapping on MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel below this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel by tapping on subscribe button below this video in YouTube if it's not currently reading and subscribed. For any further correspondence, kindly write it to us through the email mlswap at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening to me and God bless.